When two sympathetic hearts meet in the marriage state, matrimony may be called a happy life. When such a wedded pair find thorns in their path, each will be eager for the sake of the other to tear them from the root. Patience and love will accompany them on their journey. Hand in hand, they pass on from morning till evening, through their summer's day, till the night of old age draws on, and the sleep of death overtakes the one. The other, weeping and mournful, still looks forward to that bright region where he will meet his still surviving partner among trees and flowers which themselves have planted in fields of eternal return. You may tell my father I'll marry. Oh. <laughs> this picture is pleasing, but I must beg you to consider that there's another on the same subject. When convenience and fair appearance, joined with folly and ill humor, bores the fetters of matrimony, they gall with their weight the married pair. This mutual aversion increases with the years they live together. They contend most where they should most unite, torment where they should most soothe. In this rugged way, they take their daily journey till one of them also sleeps in death, the other then lifts up his dejected head and cries out in acclamations of joy, Oh, liberty, dear liberty! I will not marry. You mean to say you will not fall in love? Oh, no, I am in love. Are in love. And with the Count. I wish I was. Why so? Because he perhaps would love me. Who is there that would not? Would you? I. 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 Oh, I. Me. I am out of the question. No, you are the very person to whom I put the question. What do you mean? I'm glad you don't understand me. I was afraid I'd spoken too plain. Understand you? And to that, I am not dull. I know you are not. And as you have for a long time instructed me, why should not I now begin to teach you? You teach? Why not? None but a woman can teach the science of herself. This is nothing to the subject. What is the subject? Of love. Come then, teach it me. Teach it me as you taught me geography, languages, and other important things. Oh, oh you won't. You've already taught me that, and you won't begin again. Oh, again, you misconceive and misconstrue everything <laughs> I say or do. The subject I came upon was matrimony. A very proper subject from the man who has taught me love, and I accept the proposal. Again, you misconceive and confuse. Me. I see how it is. You have no inclination to experience with me the good part of matrimony. No, you had rather cry out, Oh, liberty, dear liberty. Why must you force from me what it is villainous to own? I, I love you more than life. Oh. <laughs> oh. Amelia. Your birth and fortune make our union impossible. I would not marry you without the consent of your father. And could I, dare I propose it to him? He has commanded me never to disguise or conceal the truth. I will propose it to him. The subject of the Count will force me to speak plainly, and it will be the most opportune time to compare the merit of you both. I conjure you not to expose yourself or me to his resentment. It is my father's will that I should marry. It is my father's wish to see me happy. If then you love me, as you say, I will marry and will be happy, but only with you. I will tell him this. At first he will start, then grow angry, then be in a passion, but he will soon recollect himself and resume his usual smile, saying, Well, if he love you and you love him, in the name of heaven let it be. Then I will hug him round the neck and fly to you. I'm oh!